Hello everybody, this is Jeffrey G297 and welcome to the episode. And this episode is going to be a special episode as today is in fact Memorial Day. So hopefully all you guys had a great day today. It be Memorial Day. Remembering all those that gave the ultimate sacrifice for their lives just to keep ourselves and our country free and having all of our rights as well in our country. So hopefully you guys have been having a great Memorial Day, either taking a day off at work or just mainly visiting family and friends um, so yeah and with it being Memorial Day weekend usually this is the most prestigious week in my opinion uh, for the whole racing weekend as well so we have a lot of activities um, yesterday as you may have known um, starting off with the first racing event out of the three um, it being the Monaco Grand Prix as we saw the hometown hero Charles Leclerc being able not only to get the pole, but being able to get the win as well. So, great for him. Uh, we had Joseph Newgarden having a very intense last lap battle pass with Pato Ward, defending his uh, reign at the Indy 500. And for NASCAR, we had the Coca-Cola 600 shortened. So, Christopher Bell had the lead halfway through the race, and he was declared the winner. So, as we get back to the main episode, to find the car, the F50 is currently at the... Legends Cars dealership, and you can see the price is pretty steep, right at 4.45 million credits. So I suggest just do a lot of farming in your particular place, it being Sardina, Tokyo, or at Le Mans or Spa. Um, so it's going to take you quite a bit to get this car. Now there is a blue arrow pointing down, so I believe the next time it does show up, um, hopefully it'll be a little bit cheaper as well as you can see the points is right at 610 so we can do some minor nerfing to the car uh, to make sure it does fit the standard uh, for the Tokyo 600 race uh, but the car is just gorgeous to look at very unique car uh, with over 500 horsepower with over four close to 400 pounds of torque the weight being right above 2700 pounds naturally aspiration is the aspiration itself and yeah, that's how you get the car. Now for the next part, delivery I'll be using, I recommend just going to GT Auto or to Showcase and just have the keyword search being F1. I'm going to be using this livery right here on the top right corner, which is a 2024 um, Ferrari F1 livery. After that, for your wheels, you're going to go to Mategi Racing. Click on the very first rims you see. After that, uh, whenever you have the option menu for the offset and the width, make sure it's set to wide and make sure the inch diameter is set to 19 inches. After that, um, as you can see, we're right below uh, the 600 point criteria. Uh, as you can see, for custom parts, if you're curious, uh, you don't need any custom parts. Um, so just basically just change the wheels. That's all you'll be doing for it and that'll be it. So as we head to our setup, as you can see, we have ourselves sport hards as a tire compound um, for this build. After that, we're going to scroll all the way down to our tour, or yeah, differentials can be fully customized. 5, 5, and 30 is going to numbers. As we go to our power restrictor, it's going to be set to 91. And after you do that, uh, the next step will be the fully customized manual transmission. It's going to be right at 350. And as we scroll all the way to the far right, uh, the last part you need is a steering angle adapter and the increased body rigidity, and that's going to be it uh, for the build. So just mainly just take off a couple horsepower points. That's all you'd be doing for this build. So as we get the race started on the first lap, uh, the car does have a fairly decently good acceleration. Um, it will take a little while for it to really come to life, but the car is, matter of fact, decently good. I say probably in the main straight is probably at least in the top four, if not the top three fastest car on the main straights. But other than that, all it basically is good at is at handling. Also, not to mention the tires in this car is really good as well, and the fuel mileage is really good as well. So as we get to our first breaking point, we just get ourselves inside the top 10. Uh, we're going to brake very carefully, trying to see what we're going to do here in the first few turns. As we see as the Porsche does get out of shape, we ourselves get close to the wall, just barely tapping it a little bit on our left quarter panel. Uh, we're going to save the car, we're going to make some spots, make come some contact with the Porsche with our left rear quarter panel, but we keep going. Uh, moving us to P8, and we're going to make a move on the Subaru uh, Impreza, moving us to 7th place. So other than that, a decently good start for us um, as we make our mark, getting closer and closer to the green Mercedes-Benz GTR. Uh, we're going to make a big dive bomb as we go underneath this overpass, making us to 6th place. And 
so far so good. Uh, we're getting really close to top five, and we should be able to be a threat. Uh, to hopefully, get P2 by the end of the first lap. Hopefully, that's the main goal. I don't think we'll be able to get the lead. Uh, but you can see the car just really has really good handling uh, compared to the rest of the cars. You can just put that car in certain spots where the AI can't put their cars, and it's just really, really smooth. The braking has good brake response. The car itself has a really nice flow to it as well. Uh, you can just see just mainly in that corner, just literally let gravity take control and just get back to the power uh, very smoothly after passing the apex. But you can see we got ourselves a, quite a scuffle for P2 right now. Uh, so we're just going to wait just a little bit see what's going to happen. We see the rear mirror and the Supra very badly and very aggressively. Uh, we're going to take advantage over that. We're going to pass the GTR and then we're going to be side by side with the Supra. Have a little trouble with traction, we're going to hit its right rear core panel and just like that we're going to move ourselves to P3. So it actually became more or less the big winner of that little battle. But as you can see we had the rear mirror RX-7 right in front of us and actually getting away from us just a little bit. But we're going to be right at P3 uh, once the lap is ended, which isn't too bad. Not to mention we're catching to the rear mirror pretty quickly. So we're going to get some nice tow from the RX-7 and you can see right behind us we have the GTR pretty much catching us down pretty quickly as well, very aggressively. Um, so we're going to put ourselves in a very defensive position. You can see his right side, or left side. Uh, we're going to have to outbreak it just a little bit. We're going to break, and then thankfully we have the perfect line compared to the GTR, and we actually secure uh, P3, and we're going to now get ourselves on the hunt and see if we can get ourselves P2 uh, right halfway through the lap. So this car handling is coming back to life actually did feel a bit better to drive in those first two corners. We're going to do like we did the first lap and let those four wheels go below that white line. You can see we can just easily glue the prep side of that wall and make a very aggressive move on the outside, passing the rear mirror for P2 right at pretty much the halfway, give or take, on lap two. Uh, we're now going to go fast forward to one lap later on lap number three, and we're going to, going to do the same exact thing uh, later down the road. Um, being able to really catch down the Honda in these very mid corners uh, and you'll be able to quickly see that difference between our car and the Honda uh, just being able to really let the gravity be our friend and just literally help us in these corners. We're going to make a very different arc approach in the apex and just like that we're going to take the lead right about three-fourths a quarter of a way on lap three. Fast forward now to what will be lap number seven this is going to be a hot lap of the race, so I'm going to let you guys watch, see what the car can do around this track. And I'll see you guys later when we get to our pit stop.
So as you see, we did a 208.831, which I thought was pretty good uh, for this car. So we're going to come in to pit road on lap 8. The tires, like I mentioned before, they handled very well. They're in really good shape, um, even though there is a little bit wear on them. But I'm not too worried about the condition of the tires. So all you got to do here is just add fuel to the car, and that's mainly just it. Uh, just add just enough passing that little diamond icon on your fuel map bar, and you'll be good to go. Just do a couple more time trial laps. And then, like I said before, you're in good shape. So as we get this race finish and underway, uh, we'll be able to lap two cars, the Viper and the Jaguar, successfully. And this run was really good. Uh, it's going to be a 26.32 overall, or 20 or 33. Um, so it is about, give or take, three seconds faster than the last run I did about three months ago. Uh, so this is actually a little bit better performance um, compared to the last run I did. Um, so I'm very pleased with the run itself, um, but compared to this, the F40, the F40 is like nothing compared to the F50. The F40 is much better. Um, so that's going to be it for the race. We got the standard bonus because we did make contact with the Porsche and, you know, had all kinds of stuff happening to us in the race as well. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. Hopefully this F50 would be a big help to you if you decide to do this run at Tuck Expressway. If not, uh, then I really recommend trying this car out at uh, Le Mans. Because just seeing how good the car felt, not to mention the good fuel capacity it had, uh, the handling, most importantly the top speed, it was carrying down the straightaways. Um, I think this would be a really good car to use for the mall if you would rather choose, let this be a mall car than a Tokyo car. But it was a lot of fun uh, doing this car, especially for this special event, uh, for this today being special. So hopefully this will help out. And if you guys enjoyed the episode, why not give a like on this episode? If you guys are interested and would like to support the channel or would like to see some more of my content future in the down the road then why not go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well as i try my best to upload daily as well if you guys want to check out my last episode i covered using the subaru brz both the stock and the engine swap at the expressway two builds uh, you can click on the field right there hopefully that field will be a big help to you just in case if that better it does better than this car uh, then hopefully it'll be a big help as well hopefully you guys have a great rest of the day or night wherever it might be and i'll see you guys later take care